Dancing in Lost Night, Chapter One, brought to you by Atlas. Who the fuck is that? November twenty fourth, twenty thirteen, Atlas holds an event that reveals many new Persona projects after the release of Shin Megami Tensei Four. <gasps> he set the Forbidden franchise. The event saw the announcement of many games such as Persona Q, Persona 4 Arena, and some game with a bunch of nerds called Phantom Thieves. I don't know, sounds kind of boring. Probably won't sell well. One of the final announcements we see at the event is the reveal of Persona 4 Dancing All Night, a full rhythm game that continued Atlas's goal to milk P4 like the whore that it is. But wait! How is Atlas a company responsible for JRPGs and more JRPGs going to handle a game of such a different genre? Well, my friend, that's exactly where Dingo comes into play. Who? You know, if you waited a second, you'd actually get the answer to your fucking question. So, who exactly is Dingo? Dingo was a game developer located in Shibuya, known for making many games on the PSP and Vita, notably remembered for working on the Hatsune Miku Project Diva series. I say remembered because those niggas are fucking dead now, and Persona 4 Dancing All Night was one of their last projects. A project they never actually finished. <laughs> it's a bit of a long story. Dingo's most recent game before the announcement of P4D was a game called Love Live School Idol Paradise. Yeah, this is some cringe shit P5 fans would like. Anyways, I would try to explain what the Love Live series is, but from my one second of panic after writing that previous joke, when I remembered how widely popular this brand? is it's safe to say y'all probably know more about love live than i'll ever be able to comprehend but back to idle paradise first thing that caught my eye was the fact that the game had a story mode like fully fleshed out voice acting text boxes and story modey things a staple of why persona 4 dancing all night felt so special especially in comparison to its successors some other features that carried over to P4D are customizable costumes, unnecessary DLC, and forcibly splitting games into two separate packages and still selling them at full price. Look nigga, you clicked on this video, I'm gonna get these jokes off whether you like them or not. But honestly though, the game actually does seem rather fun. The soundtrack, while not something I'd ever openly admit to listening to as I am a straight male, it's okay so i wrote that joke when i didn't know exactly what i was going to be wearing in this video please don't bully me in the comment section i know what the fuck i, I look like nigga i i wrote the joke thinking i was going to be dressed up like <laughs> there are actually some pretty good songs in this game but not good enough to stop this bitch from financially fucking flopping yeah the idol paradise games were three separate games that were essentially all the same games sold separately at full price. A very snake-like thing to do for a rhythm game. Hopefully no company tries to do that dumb shit in the future. The 51 employed company struggled with making successful games after Love Live and filed for bankruptcy in 2017. Former workers at Dingo claimed they had gone unpaid and the company had about 300 million yen in debt. This was all reported on 2chan, the Japanese board that inspired 4chan, so who knows if this shit is even true. But who the fuck even knows who Dingo is, so if it wasn't canon before, well bitch, it's canon now. Before closing their doors, Dingo's most successful game was 2010's Hatsune Miku Project Diva 2nd, selling 340 units. Not anything to call home about, but still selling more than Persona 4 Dancing in Starlight. You may have noticed that I said Dingo never finished working on P4D, which came out in 2015, yet they closed their doors in 2017. Why exactly is that?
Chapter 2, brought to you by At... Is it Atlas this time? Yes, it's Atlas this time! Brought to you by Atlas! Jesus Christ. When looking at the unfinished work of Dingo, we see that motion capture for a bunch of songs were already recorded and implemented into the game. When I first started researching info for this video, this is actually where I gave up, as I have played P4D for hundreds and hundreds of hours. I recognized a lot of these dances, but couldn't pinpoint what songs they actually were. Thinking I was going legally blind at the age of 17, I come back to you as a 20 year old to report that the dances shown in the dingo build of the game are in fact not seen within the finished product. Y'all do not understand how many fucking hours of my life I wasted trying to match these fucking dance to the goddamn track! I've become quite acquainted with the way the choreographers move and thought I saw dances in the final build of the game seen within the reveal trailer. But that was just my intuition getting the best of me. What I believe is happening is one of two things. Many choreographers create multiple variants of a dance to go with one song. This is so that if one dance is rejected by the client, the dancer can showcase another version of a dance to go with said song. That or there are some songs within the dingo build that didn't make it into the final release. The reveal trailer itself has a funky version of Reach Out For The Truth not seen anywhere within the game. <laughs> So it's certainly possible there are other unreleased versions from earlier P4D builds that never saw the light of day. We are aware of two different versions of Marie's dazzling smile, so other variants of songs might also be lost to the test of time. The original release date for the game was slated for an autumn 2014 window, but at Tokyo Game Show of the same year, the game was delayed into 2015, and Dingo's name was mysteriously dropped from the project to quote, address quality of the game's development. Atlas would take over Dancing All Night with the director of P4 Arena Ultimax, Kazuhisa Wada, heading the project. Following the delay is when we finally see the dancing game we've all come to love take its final form. Hey, is it showtime yet? No, dumbass. It's not even close. Just shut up. Uh, chapter three. With Wada on the case of fixing Dingo's paint job, many changes were made to P4D in the span of a year. We see more stage variants, updated models, and an overall gameplay overhaul. During an interview, Wada talked about the different styles for each of the members in the investigation team, stating, Each of the dancers' style come from a different genre of dance. Each character also has a unique real-life dancer doing their choreography. After all, there's no way Yukiko would ever do the same dance style as, say, Teddy, which is a bit embarrassed if you ask me. But like many Persona spin-offs, Dancing All Night is canon to P4's overall story. Wada made it a point to mention that as the investigation team has grown so much since the events of P4, Naoto no longer holds insecurity revolving her identity and is able to embrace her feminine side with confidence. I just wanted to highlight that because Naoto and her motion capture dancer are some of my favorite pair in any of the Persona dancing games and it's nice to see some growth outside of the main story of P4. So Yosuke's and Risei's style of dance takes after the male and female idol industry in Japan. Chie takes after street style with a sprinkle of her love for martial arts. Yukiko is an elegant ballerina and Teddy's style apparently takes from gymnastics. I say apparently because I seriously have no clue what the hell that means, but if the director says this is gymnastics, well bitch, it's fucking gymnastics. Naoto's dances were focused in a style of dance called House. Yes, I was confused when I first heard of it as well, but trust me, it's really fun. 
Yu's style is described in quite a funny fashion. When describing Yu, Wada said, Well, let's be honest. With the protagonist, you can make him do most anything and he'd probably still have that dumb grin on his face the whole time. We were actually a little wary about maintaining that facet of his personality for his dances, but in the end of the day, we agreed that's ultimately part of his charm. And indeed it is. It worked out really well. His dances are made that much more fun and unique. I'm more than sure Wada is very pleased with the specialist memes that started sprouting up a couple years ago. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Nanako, who has a pretty interesting story as well. Apparently, it was rather difficult to capture Nanako's character with the dances that were provided. There was always a sense of eroticism with the motion capture, which... Ew. So the team had to go back and tweak a lot of the capture to give us the true Nanako the world needs, but truthfully, doesn't deserve. After their original parents lose custody and they're handed off to close relatives, Persona 4 Dancing All Night releases in June of 2015 to positive reviews. But our story doesn't end there, ladies and gentlemen. We can't talk about this dancing game without giving recognition to the people who gave life to the characters we've all come to love. All the Persona dancing games share a pretty consistent team of choreographers. If any of you have seen the Persona Super Lives, you've definitely seen some of the many faces behind the dancers in P4D and the other Persona dancing games. Just to highlight a few, we have Kazoo as Yu Narukami, Kojiro Ishioka as Teddy, Yu Juri as Kanji Tatsumi, Yu Z as Yosuke Hanamura, Arisa Noto as Nanako Dojima, Ayumi Miyazaki as Yukiko Amagi, and Chiho Yamane as Naoto Shirogane. Sorry about leaving out a few names, I wanted to make sure I provided photos to the faces of the characters, but not all the members are public. This cast of talented dancers helped make P4 so much more magical. I know that for me, I never would have started dancing if it wasn't for this game and the team behind it. I already can't love Persona 4 more than I already do, and even Dancing All Night holds a special place in my heart for what it's done for me. Hey man, that's cool and all, but is it showtime yet? <sighs> Let's do it. Yo, it's Justice. I just wanted to thank everybody who stuck around to the end of this video, as I've been researching this topic on and off for about three years now and never thought I'd actually wind up making this video. It would mean a lot to me if you just simply click the like button for... Um... I mean, I don't really have a reason, it's just a nice gesture. I don't know, please? <laughs> If anything, take pity on me as I recorded these dances and clips while recovering from a back injury. And bitch, let me tell you, I was in so much pain while recording this shit, man. Ah, uh, I don't know what else to say in this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, peace. <laughs> Love you all. Later.